Senate Concurrent Resolution 8, in memoriam Bob Ingram, 1973, 2011. Recognize Senator Shields. Thank you, Madam President. Three words, Madam President. Three words. Live like Rob. Live like Rob. Those were the words that have become a motto for one of his best friends, Asa Pritchard, Jermaine Atherton, and indeed have become a motto of an entire community. Live like Rob. Senate Concurrent Resolution 8 <clears throat> honors Rob Ingram in memoriam for his lifetime of work empowering youth in North and Northeast Portland. Among other roles, Mr. Ingram worked tirelessly on gang outreach and prevention and served as the director of the Office of Youth Violence Prevention at the City of Portland. He was the president of the Urban League of Portland's Young Professionals. He was president of Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Columbia Northwest African American Advisory Council, and executive director of Empowerment Initiatives. And he was a great dad to five wonderful kids and a great husband. Because of his work in the community, because of his work with family, he was awarded in 2010 the very prestigious Drum Major for Justice Award by the Scanner newspaper. Rob Ingram believed in compassionate communities. I had the privilege of working with Mr. Ingram on many public safety concerns in North and Northeast Portland. As our colleague Representative Frederick said in testimony in the Rules Committee last week, while others complained about disconnected youth, and these are Representative Frederick's words, Rob made connections. Somehow he caused young people, particularly young black men, to care almost as much about their futures as he did, because he did care so much. He helped police officers and city officials see the potential in young people seeking a place to belong. Such an ability, Rep. Frederick said, is more art than science, more talent than training, more intuition than calculation. But along with his talent, he applied tireless work and a huge heart. We lost a great leader when that heart stopped, Madam President. For me, live like Rob meant Rob having my back in a contentious negotiation in the community about fortified liquor in one of our neighborhoods. And I'll never forget him having my back all throughout those discussions. The community was shocked by the loss of Mr. Ingram. It happened so unexpectedly and far too soon at the age of 38. But it is truly incredible how much Mr. Ingram was able to accomplish with his limited time here on Earth. He will be missed not only for his inspirational leadership and courageous and dedicated work for the community, but also for the example he set for others as a loving family man and selfless support to those in need. Live like Rob for me, meant watching him line up dozens of dads along the sidewalk in front of Woodlawn Elementary to welcome Woodlawn Elementary school kids to the first day of school. Live Like Rob meant taking part each year in tilling the soil, a cleanup project at Jefferson High School that he and I worked with, gosh, for probably seven or eight years with, with Mr. Atherton, Mr. Pritchard, and so many others. Live Like Rob meant him spending his Saturday nights driving around in a patrol car with probation officers and police officers to make sure that gang violence was decreased in our communities. Mr. Ingram is survived by his mother, his wife Dana, and their five children, Shamia, Darielle, Renee, Naj, and Kai. Uh, in, on the side aisle with us is Milele Hobbs, his mother, James Hobbs, his father, Pastor James Hobbs, his father, Randy Pittman, sister-in-law, Shardia Booth, niece, 
Naj, his daughter, and Rakai Adams, a cousin. Mr. President, if everybody here in this body lived like Rob, there is no limit to the number of challenges that we can overcome and the progress that we can make for this dear state of ours. Rob would conclude every meeting at the gang task force at the uh, North Precinct. We'd go through an entire agenda and then he'd say, let's get to work. So colleagues, let's live life, Rob. Let's get to work. Please join me an incredible honor in bestowing our highest honor on Rob Ingram. Please vote aye. Thank you, Ms. Madam President. Discussion, recognize Senator Farioli. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Madam President, I did not know Rob Ingram, but as a member of the Senate Rules Committee, I had the opportunity to learn about his life and his contributions and his family and the deep caring that he had for his people, his neighborhood, and all Oregonians. And I would just say that in learning about the details of Rob Ingram's life, I saw the ability to inspire as being a gift from God. And when you see that gift at work, and you see the transformational power that comes from that gift, it's awe-inspiring. So I would simply say this, that I was touched by his ability to inspire, and I think that's his legacy, the inspiration that he gives us all. Thank you, Madam President. Recognize Senator Rosenbaum. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I also rise in support of Senate Concurrent Resolution 8, honoring the life and many contributions of Rob Ingram. And as you've heard, he was many, many things in his short life, a mentor to young people who were struggling to find their way, and a counselor to those who were searching for answers or even just needed someone to listen. He was a tireless worker for the city's Office of Youth Violence Prevention. He would often, as we heard in committee and you heard again today, be out on the streets working with kids, helping them make it through school, connecting them with jobs, doing whatever was necessary to give them a sense of possibility and promise. Rob Ingram touched so many people before his life was cut short, and that's true not only with his work with young people, but also the leadership positions, including as president of the Urban League of Portland's Young Professionals. So it's especially meaningful that we are able to honor him today when we have so many from the Urban League here to join us. Mr. Ingram touched so many people that over a thousand of them attended the service and celebration of his life, and it's great to see so many people here today to honor him. I want especially to thank Mrs. Hobbs. We heard from her in committee, and she's here again today, for raising such a son, somebody who could bring so much leadership and so much joy and just set a great example for young people. And to Dana, who is sitting here on the floor with us, and to Rob's five children, there aren't many people who can bring this much good and this much justice to a world in a short 38 years. And all I can think is that his light shone very, very bright for all of those 38 years but that light has not been extinguished, not at all. It will shine on in his legacy, in all the lives that he touched, in the example of good and justice that he set for our state and our world. And I just want to thank you for sharing him with us. I want to thank Senator Shields for giving us the opportunity to honor him. It is really a privilege to even have been able to talk about such a fantastic person. Thank you. Further discussion? If not, Senator Shields, do you wish to close? He does not. The question now arises on the third reading and final adoption of Senate Concurrent Resolution 8. Those are of the opinion that the bill should be adopted. will answer aye as their names are called. Those opposed, no. The clerk will call the roll. Thompson? Witsit? Winters? Baird Sugar? 
Bates? Byer? Boquist? Burdick? Close? Devlin? Devlin? Dingfelder? Edwards? Ferrioli? George? Gerard? Hansel? Haas? Johnson? Canope? Cruz? Monas Anderson? Monroe? Olson? Przansky? Roblin? Rosenbaum? Shields? Starr? Steiner Hayward? President Courtney? 30 aye votes. Senate Concurrent Resolution 8, having received a constitutional majority, is declared adopted. Recognize Senator Winters. For what purpose do you rise? Uh, return to courtesies, please, Madam President. Without objection. Madam President, would you please extend courtesy and recognition to one of our own who is sitting up in the gallery, Senator A. Val Gordley. <laughs> courtesies. <laughs> are properly extended to you, Senator Gordley. Uh, further courtesies. If not, we'll return to the regular order of business. Third reading, the clerk will read the next bill. Senate Bill 181, relating to repayment of loans for water projects. Recognize Senator Gerard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> uh, Senate Bill 181 addresses one of the funds overseen and administered by the Instructure Finance Authority, the Water Fund excuse me, the Infrastructure Finance Authority. Uh, money in the water funds are appropriated uh, by OBDD for the Infrastructure Finance Authority to make loans to municipalities for water projects. The IFA may also grant from the water fund in cases where the loans is not feasible for the study or for the asset building purposes. Under current law, loans made by the water fund can be for a maximum of only 25 years. This bill extends it to 30 years. It's a great uh, bill for economic development. It passed out unanimous out of our committee, and I encourage an I vote. Discussion? If not, Senator Gerard, do you wish to close? He does not. The question now arises on third reading and final passage of Senate Bill 181. Those who are the opinion of the bill should be passed. We'll answer ayes. Your names are called. Those opposed, no. The clerk will call the roll. Whitsitt? Winters? Bearchiger? Bates? Byer? Boquist? Boquist? Burdick? Close? Devlin? Dingfelder? Edwards? Ferrioli? George? Gerard, Hansel, Haas, Johnson, Knope, Cruz, Monas Anderson, Monroe, Olson, Brzezanski, Roblin, Rosenbaum, Shields, Starr, Steiner Hayward, Thompson, President Courtney, not answering, Boquist, 30 aye votes. Senate Bill 181, having received a constitutional majority, is declared passed.